Well, hi. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Summerfield Farm and Draft Horses. And this episode is all going to be about that girl. Well, she's a guy. I call it Farmer Bob. <laughs> yes, I named my truck Farmer Bob. So, um, what am I going to talk about today? Well, uh, you saw the episode of me selling my truck, the trailer, so I'm kind of stuck. I need another one. I need uh, something better, something bigger. And in order to be bigger, to carry <laughs> those guys. Hi, Jarvis. <laughs> um, I'm going to need a four horse. I'm thinking a three horse, another three horse. But having him and Darcy stuck together in a very small spot and then having another horse kind of in the back of it, it was probably pushing the weight limit of the trailer um, simply because Mr. Big White and Fluffy is like 1,800 pounds. So, and Darcy is like a little over 1,200. So in order to have, let's see, 1,800 and 1,200 and then another, say, 1,200 pound horse, you know, that's, that's pushing it for a little bumper pull trailer. So I'm looking to get a four horse trailer um, and it's going to have to be a gooseneck. So I don't know if I have the attachments right for that because I'm looking, I think Darcy's going to roll. I think he's going to roll. Let's go over and see. I thought he was going to wander. I thought he was going to roll. Oh, well, he might. He looks like he's, yeah, I think he is. Yep. There's the paw. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. He's looking for a spot, but I think Jarvis doesn't want him to. Well, I guess he decided not to roll. Oh, well, they do that every once in a while. But I can guarantee you by the time I turn around, he's probably going to be on the ground. So, back to the subject at hand. Um, a gooseneck. So, I don't know a lot about gooseneck trail hitches. I don't know a lot about hitches at all. So, I have been taking the whole weekend and doing a ton of research on hitches. Um, the best brands, the styles, uh, what fits my truck, what doesn't, and of course, oh my God, the cost. Oh, these are so expensive. Oh my gosh. It's like, and of course I'm gonna put it in myself, you know, of course, because <laughs> that's what I do. Um, and I have um, a bed liner. So I'm not sure. They asked me, one of the, the people, asked me um, today as I was looking because I found a really really good deal and um, I can't remember the company name right now but I know his name was Ryan <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go back into my notes and see because I wrote everything down and he's asking me a bunch of questions and I'm like dude I don't know I don't know anything about this so he asked if I had these like little pucks or something under on my bed of my trailer so um, oop, let's zoom out. Okay. So he wanted to know what I had up under here and that looks pretty awful. That looks like it's all scratched up and everything. And I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't look like there's any type of puck or anything like holes or anything drilled in there. Boy, don't put a bed liner in your truck. Man, look at all the just like all the way down to the paint, all the way down to the metal. Looks like I'm going to have to get this rhino line before I put a, a gooseneck in it. Otherwise it'll look awful. That's another $500. Ooh. Well, it doesn't look like I have the little holes that I'm going to have to need. So, um, Oh, well, let's see where this video takes us. It'll probably take a couple of days to put together. <laughs> but I'll let you know. So, we'll see you next time. Hey, welcome back, guys. Okay. Um, yeah. So, uh, today is the day. This is the weekend that I have been waiting for. Um, it's been a few days, and I'm looking for some stuff. Um, and, um, <sighs> I finally got all the materials. So, today... And tomorrow and Monday, because Monday's Labor Day, we're going to be putting in the gooseneck hitch in the truck. But it's a couple things that need to be done before I can put the gooseneck hitch in. I just can't throw it in. Well, I suppose I could, but um, it would be easier if I do it this way. 
So um, let me show you what I've got. So come on out with me and I will show you. Okay, I put everything in the truck. Let's see, no bed rails, bed rails are gone. Okay, so first things first, what, we, what I'm going to do is um, I've got to take the bed liner out. And unfortunately, like you saw before, it was all scratched up underneath it. So now I have to fix that before I can put the, the uh, gooseneck hitch in. And in order to do that, I need to have some type of protection on the, I'm going to sit you guys right here, right on the edge there. I need some sort of protection for the bed liner or for the bed because the scratches have gone all the way down through the paint. So what I did is... I went out and bought some stuff. And this is what I settled on. Oh, it's backwards. Sorry. It's a Herculiner. And this is going to be um, the roll-on kind. Because I could do the spray-on. Um, and I did a lot of research on this. Um, deciding, do I want to do the spray-on? I was gonna do like the Raptor one with all the little bottles and the little sprayer. But do I wanna bring out the air compressor and do I wanna tape off all the truck and do I wanna do all of this extra work? No, I don't because I have other things to do. And I don't wanna pay somebody $500 to do it. So <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm a little uh, frugal. I'm not cheap, I'm frugal. So I did a bunch of research, a bunch, like two days worth of research to find out which is the better spray-in, which is the easier spray-in versus the roll-on, what do they look like, how do they hold up, and blah, 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 blah. Well, since I decided I wasn't gonna do the spray-on, which gives a really, really good professional result if you do it right, um, and I didn't wanna bring out all that stuff, so I went with the Herculiner, which is the roll-on, um, which is kinda neat, like, it's got like this really neato thing. Um, so, I decided to do that because all the, re the reviews say it's really strong. I don't need it to be like super strong. That would be always nice, but I don't need it to be. Um, and that it was easy. I don't like that shiny, cheesy look, you know. Um, I, I don't like that. I'm, I'm a matte type of person. I like it matte looking. But um, this one is saying that it's, it's textured, but um, it's not going to be super shiny. I hope. So I bought that. Which means, in order to do that, um, I have to cut some holes in the bed of the truck for the hitch first. Because you don't want to cut through this stuff and dull all your stuff. I'm watching the birds. I don't, You don't want to dull everything after you put this on. So you want to put this on after you make your holes. So, in order to do that, I had to make sure I knew I had all my, my items for the holes. And I end up having to go out and go get a, a hole saw. And I had to get new blades because all of my metal blades are dull from working on the barn. So these ones are uh, for hardened steel, so this will go through anything. So I had to get that. And then I had to get a wiring harness. <laughs> so it's like all of this just to try to put a gooseneck hitch in my truck. I have to do all of this stuff. So... I went over to my neighbor who's going to let us borrow his uh, trailer, which is the gooseneck, which is why we're doing all this. And um, we lined it up, took off the bed rails because that we thought that the hitch, the truck was going to be too high because my truck is six, uh, 90 inches, no, 60 inches from here to the ground. And it was like 42 or something like that to the bed. And I wanted to make sure because his is a little older. I didn't want to have any clearance problems because you want to have six inches of clearance um, between the bed rail. So you want to have about that much clearance. No, that's, it's quite a bit, you know, two fingers is six inches. That's six inches. Cause you know, each segment of your finger is like approximately an inch. Believe it or not, measure your finger. This is three inches and that's three inches. <laughs> okay guys, three inches. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's awful. My husband always says about that. So anyway, um, I had to make sure that we were going to have enough clearance. And then he's like, well, where's your plug? I'm like, what do you mean? Where's my plug? And he goes, your plug that's supposed to be in the bed of the truck so we can hook up the lights. Where is it? I said, well, I've only had a bumper pull, so it's down by the license plate. 
So he showed me a guy's other um, uh, plug setup and it dragged on the ground and there's like exposed wires everywhere and then it pulled it out and it just made a big mess. He goes, you need one in the bed of your truck. He goes, this is where I want you to put it. So I went on Amazon and I bought myself a plug setup, which means another hole needs to be drilled in the bed of the truck. <laughs> I've got a big four inch hole that I need to drill for the gooseneck. I have four of the smaller ones for the safety chains that I have to drill. And now I got to drill and put this in because this is where it plugs in. You know, so. so this goes in the bed of the truck. This gets hooked up in here. Well, somewhere like that, like that. And then I think this goes here. And then these two go down underneath. Anyway, I don't know. This directions really good directions so those directions say well the gooseneck directions say i needed to make a three and a half inch hole in the bed of the truck Boop. just like that where the bed goes but this one i need something smaller bigger smaller two and an eighth all i have is one and a half one and a half so i have to go out and go get another one of these so that's where I'm off to. I'm off to the hardware store to go find a little drill thing. And um, then I can take the bed liner out. Then I have to sand it because you have to get all of the paint off it because the Herculiner will not stick to a smooth surface. You have to rough it up. Everybody knows that. That anything like paint sticks to a rough surface versus a non-rough surface. So... I went to my Ace Hardware store and I have one of these little tiny guys, the little handheld one, so <laughs> it is going to be a lot of work. So in order to put one gooseneck hitch in, I have to take off the bed rails, I have to take out the bed liner, I have to scrub up the bed liner, I have to drill all the holes for said gooseneck and the electrical, then I have to rhino line it, and then I have to let it dry, and then I can install the gooseneck hitch in the bed of the truck before or after the electrical. I don't know. I haven't decided which step I want to do first or second. So, this is going to be a long weekend. Hopefully it won't be a long video. <laughs> so, let's go get this done. turtle you need to be over here there always save a turtle they take forever to get that big <laughs> so now we're home and uh, the hardware store had what I needed um, sort of they had, this is a two and a quarter and I need two and an eighth they didn't have two and an eighth but the quarters only a little bit bigger so it's not gonna be that big of a deal and this is the reason why let me put you guys back up on the door here. All right. So this is the reason why it's not that big of a deal. If this is just like an eighth of an inch bigger than this, um, probably. Well, it might be because I think if this was supposed to go in the hole boop, like that and it was supposed to catch on here, 
but um, since I have a blade, this actually is going to be better than the one I have. Because <laughs> um, these are really, really cheap and they get dull really fast. And this one's not a cheap one. This one was like, I don't know, like 13 bucks for this. So um, this, you have a chuck in here, which is like this thing right here. And that goes inside. So, and then um, this, oh wow, that's much bigger. There. So it'll be a little bit bigger, but you can see um, this is going to cover the little bit bigger hole. And it's not really that much bigger. Like that much bigger. But it'll cover the hole and it'll fit in just fine. And these, like that, you won't be able to tell. So, all right, well, let's do this, shall we? We're going to super speed through this and uh, oh, let's get this done. This is going to take forever. Three days. I can guarantee it'll probably take three days because it's raining. It's going to be raining. See, look. So I have to do this all between that. So. Let's get going. So, um, got these little pieces, I'll throw those away. Um, this is what was underneath that piece there. And I, I've never put in a bed liner. I've never taken one out. So if that was ugly, then it was ugly. <laughs> but you can see what I was talking about earlier. It just goes all the way down to the paint. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is what happens when you don't put the plugs in. See that, that hole that's over there? It, it comes with little plugs. And if you don't put those in... You get all sorts of crap in the bed of your truck. So, um, it's actually not as bad as I thought. I'll have to wash all of this stuff out. Because usually it's the first place to rest. But apparently, you know, he had some stuff in here before I bought the truck. But this will all get painted over. And, um, if this was left exposed, it would probably rust. Um... But it wasn't, so it was covered up. It's actually not bad condition, really. Um, so now time to go scuff it up. So now that we got, well, I gotta rinse this all out. Sweep it all out, rinse it all out. And then we can scuff it. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba Ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-ba-
That the bed is all nice and brushed out um, you can see where the marks are for the trailer hitch now that's gonna go right here in the middle and right underneath here there's a giant plate that um, will put that hole right here and that's where the gooseneck ball is gonna stick up and then um, there are these four separate spots here 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 and here, where if we had mounted a fifth wheel, those would be the areas where the bolts would go for the rails for the fifth wheel, but we're not going to do that. So this area here is going to be just big enough to put the, um, the gooseneck ball, and then I think it's either here and here is where your um, safety chain little loopy dupes are. So in the meantime, before I do that, and um, before we do all the scuffing, I need to make a hole right there. Um, my my neighbor, he made a mark. He says, this is where you want your plug to be. So um, basically he said, you're going to take your tail light out and then that's where the plug is going to run up underneath. Um, that way um, the plug will sit right there and then when the hitch is all up, you could have all your electrical wire in the bed of the truck and you won't have any problems. Um, I don't think I can mount it here because it'll be in the way, but he said to do it right there and that's the mark. So let's, um, let's cut that out first and then we'll see about cutting out the holes here and then we'll scuff up the whole bed. I suppose that won't matter which way we do it first, either scuff it up or cut the holes. So let's cut the holes. is I had a feeling there were going to be some wires up underneath here and this is the wiring that goes into the tailgate into the tail light so you don't want to cut through those so you want to be very careful and what I ended up doing was putting a little bit more pressure on the top which cut through this top part first and then it didn't cut through here quite yet but that's fine because I didn't want it to go all the way through because it would have grabbed this and it would have cut this but this is still very hot Whew, that's still hot So we're going to let that cool down. I'm going to grab some gloves and then um, I have a file. I grab my file and we're going to just file off all those little burrs that are all in there and get them nice and clean. And basically this is how this is going to sit in here. So when I get it mounted, um, 
I'll have the, the screws in each of the holes and it'll look like that. But I'm not gonna do this right now because remember guys, I have to rhino line and it would be stupid to rhino line around this when I can just do the hole. And that way I won't have to put any touch up paint in here to keep it from rusting. I'll just take the rhino liner and dab it in here and that'll make that nice and protected. And because the hole is just a smidgen bit bigger than what this needs to be, it'll actually add a pad to the inside of this. So it should be okay. Okay, so welcome to underneath the truck. <laughs> There's a lot of room under here, which is really, really nice. Um, except for when we go to put the um, hitch up, this has got to come out. And the heat shield over here, that has to come out. And maybe... Um, let's see if I can show you guys. Hold on, turn around. Okay, so the tires got to come out. So the tire has to come out, this heat shield has to come out, and possibly that section of the exhaust has to come out. And I need to get to that hole right over there. So I have to make sure I'm not going to damage any of these lines. So it's very, very careful that I do this. Um, now, I wonder, no, I've got to figure out a way to punch a hole up through that, through the bed of the truck, and um, that way I know where to drill my hole. And I can't do that with this tire in the way, so let's, let's get rid of the tire. <laughs> So now you can kind of see what I'm working with here. Um, we've got all of these wires. I don't know why they put them like right there. I mean, that's kind of stupid. They should have just like kind of put them a little cockeyed a bit. You know, that would have been nice. But I suppose then it would have been in the way of the springs and um, the exhaust here. Now on another video that I watched, they took this whole exhaust off, which means I would have to undo that bracket there and as you can see it's not in the best of condition and most likely i would end up breaking that bolt because that's just me <laughs> i don't have nice you know um automatic tools for this stuff and trying to get this out if anybody is a mechanic trying to get this to go backwards through a rubber grommet that's like that thick is next to impossible without cutting it and breaking it and making a big mess so I am going to try to leave that in here too. So the whole thing, I'm going to try to leave and work around it here. So the main bracket goes up under here. This is where the gooseneck goes in. And then these are the holes for where the, um, the chain emergency chains are. So obviously you want to be under here when it's cool because I wouldn't have been able to touch that. I would have burnt myself if I was, had just parked the truck. So it's kind of good that you're in here. So now you can take a look at your drive shaft and make sure that your drive shaft is not bent or there's nothing funky going on with it and it's a nice straight line. Um, you want to inspect your muffler system, which is that one and this one, and everything looks fine there. Um, way up there is the catalytic converter. That's way up here. That's, that's that little thing there, right there. That's catalytic converter and that all looks good. And you always want to make sure that while you're under here, you know, just do some preventative looking. Make sure that there's no rust and there's no 
messy stuff and it's things that just don't look right, you know. And everything looks pretty good. This looks pretty decent. So I have got to make a hole here up and through the bed and um, from there I'll be able to use the bracket that's going to mount underneath as a template to find out where I need to put these holes. So um, let's do that. Okay, so I've taken my, my drill and I have made a little pilot hole. Ah! <laughs> and now uh, I'm going to finish the cut from the top. on this one. This is the one that went through the, the side there. Super, super easy. Look at those teeth. Look at the teeth on this one. And it's too late. My hardware store isn't open. I can't buy one of these. And this isn't doing crap. It's supposed to do metal piece of junk. All right, guys. Well, <laughs> I had to go out again. Not that I had to, but I wanted to because I had to get another drill bit. So that other one is a piece of junk. Um, I don't even think it'll go through wood, to tell you the truth. Um, hold on and I'll show you. Let me shut my windows because I think it's going to rain. Okay, right so I'm going to show you again. These, this is the tips. I don't even think that that's going to cut anything anymore. That's just awful. So, down by our house, because we live in the country, we have scrap yards. And the scrap yard does carry brand new things, and sometimes they don't. But this one is just like the other one that we use to make that hole. So, and this is actually the right, the right size. I needed uh, three and a quarter, not three and a half. Um, so even though this is going to be a little bit bigger, it's no big deal. Um, this part, I mean, there's like no, no ridge to it whatsoever. It's nearly flat. So I can still utilize the same hole and it'll still cut the hole and I'm going to ride align it. So this is fine. The way this is going to be, it's, it'll be all right in the long run. I'll just make sure that it's, it's built up. So let's get this on and get this hole cut. That's really hot. <laughs> so it did use so much. I mean, that was hardly nothing. It cut it through it like butter compared to that piece of junk over there. So, um, look at all the shavings. They're like everywhere. Uh, let's see if I can get this without burning myself. So there we are. Ah, right through the bottom. <laughs> Alright, that's the first one. Now I gotta figure out how I need to there was a kit that had a template. Well, I wasn't quite spot on. A little off center. Uh oh. I don't know how that's going to work. We'll figure that out. I went up from underneath and I fixed it. Um, oops, that's hot. And I drilled it from up under here because if I was going down that way, um, it wasn't going to work out that way. So now it's all nice and neat. So now I just got to deburr it and uh, do exactly what I did to that side. Okay, so now um, I've got the holes, do holes done and now it's time to drill 
the holes for here. Now these are the holes for where the um, chains go. So if you can picture, this is up underneath the bed and this is poking through that hole out there and the ball sits in here. Now you've got your chains here that you know you pull up on a spring and then you put your your emergency chains in here. Now this goes right down through the bed of the truck and into that bracket that's welded to the frame. So in case anything happens, it just pulls off and then you're attached to your truck. So it's really, really important to make sure that these holes are perfect right through. So rather eyeball it because we know what happened the last time when I eyeballed the center <laughs> of the circle. It didn't quite work out. But there's not a lot of room here for error. So I made a template. Now some of the other ones, um, the other types of hitches, they actually have a template that you put on the bed and you can see exactly where you're supposed to drill. But unfortunately, Kurt does not. So um, it did come with like all sorts of like stuff, cardboard stuffy stuff. So um, yeah, so I made one and um, I had put the holes in there. So now it's exactly where it needs to be and I went right through. So that's where I need to drill my holes and I'm going to mark this for the top and I'm going to mark it up underneath um, just in case I have to do an underneath part but I think I could just drill them all from the top. Let's see. Now the directions say that I need to drill, let's see. chain holes go up to 11 16th 11 16th what is 11 16th that's messed up it must be canadian or something so i started with a 5 16th now this is going to go up to 11 so i'll do the math the conversion because to from metric to freaking english and um see how big 5 16th 11 16th. It's got to be like half inch or something. I don't know. Because it does. It goes like three and a quarter holes and then it goes 5 18th. 5 11 16th. 11 16th. Ah, make it a little bigger. It's ridiculous. So this is how this works. This is the spring I was telling you about. Oh yeah. And it's, it's a half inch. Um, so this is how the spring works. There, you have this is up underneath it. You have a, a washer and a spring and a washer. And this is going to be popping up on, out of the bed. So this is where the two holes go. And then as you pull this up like this under the bed, you will be to connect your your um, chains it's going to compress underneath. So that's how this works. Oop. <laughs> it works just like this. Oop. And then you hook your chain and you let it go. And then when it sits in the bed, it sits kind of flush. So obviously this is going to be up here. That's going to be up here because that's where the threads are. But this is just an example. So that's how that works. Now the way I look at it is this has to go in here. So if this fits this, then it'll fit. <laughs> I mean, you could measure it up like that, you know, be like, yeah, I think that works. Or you could measure it like that and kind of look down there. Yeah, you could, there's a bunch of different ways you could eyeball it. But um, my dad always taught me to do it this way. You know, if it matches up with the bottom, then you're pretty good. And then the other way to do it is to actually it inside the nut that you're trying to so if it fits 
like that or like that then you know it's good so <laughs> there we go there's your little lesson on how to if you don't know what it is that's how you measure go out I'll have to get an 11 16th or whatever the heck size it was that I needed so I'll just put these away it's good to have them anyway these are nice and sharp so if I ever need to drill into the barn again into the metal this will eat right through it so I'll put the batteries up on charge I'll put all this away again and um, head out to Lowe's maybe do some grocery shopping while I'm at it and uh, get an 11 sixteenths. 11 sixteenths. Seriously? Well, guys, I had to get that 11 32nd or no, 11 sixteenths drill bit. And you know, I got the holes in, but the drill, the hole is just, just a smidgen too small. So I went out to my local hardware store, they were closed. And then I figured I'd go over to the next town over go to the blue box store and they didn't have anything that I wanted they never do and then I figured well there's a cute little hardware store that's in a different town like two towns over and to see if and they were still open because it was like 5 30 by then and I was like well I can get there by six so I got there and they were really nice super super nice but again they didn't have what I was looking for so now it's raining and I didn't get 100% done with what I wanted to get done today. So I have other things to do in the house. And I still have two more days before the weekend is up. So I'm going to feed the horses. It's raining. And I didn't think it was going to rain by the time I got back home. And the horses still have their fly masks on. So that means they probably can't see. <laughs> um, so let's give them their food. And uh, take off their fly masks. And we're going to call it a day today on this particular episode. And um, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Bye.